Late in the 4th millennium BC, a wave of cheap disposable pottery swept over ancient Sumer. These crude spun bowls with steep sides and bevel rims seem to have originated in the city of Uruk and spread from there. They show a drastic change in society of the time, as previously pottery had been carefully made with details put in for aesthetic purposes, but these bowls were not that way. They were simple, they were crude, and they were mass produced. And they replaced the ornate bulls in common life in the cities of Mesopotamia. The crude bull even became the symbol for bread or food in cuneiform, the writing developing at the time. During the first millennium, the cities of Mesopotamia were still sprouting up and growing. Most people still lived out in the countryside and not within city walls, but the trades, crafts, and rites practiced and growing within the city walls were vital for Sumerian life. City-states arose to dominate the area. One might be a landowning farmer or not, but either way they owned tribute to the god or goddess of the temple in the local city-state. The priests and priestesses of those deities collected and stored the tribute of offerings of grain and goods in the temples. This grain then was given back out for many reasons, including work performed for the temple. In a way, the temples worked as a bank, a bank storing money in the form of grain instead of coin. Workers for the temple were paid in amounts of grain, as one can see in the records kept by those temples. Workers from private households, institutions consisting of one's house and those that worked for them, were paid in grain as well. Records show these payments by listing the worker's name, then showing the shape of the bull for bread, and at least giving a volume which would vary by position. Some have thought these to be simple rations, but one cannot live off of grain alone. It seems likely that people would have taken the grain they were paid in and used it to borrow for what else they needed. If this was the case, which seems likely, as they had tokens that one could carry that represented the amounts of grain that one possessed, as in the form of money to be used in trade. These were called bullions, and were small circular or discs or spheres with the mark of this bowl to show grain. The bulls represented more than the grain. They represented payment. Uniform in volume, simple bulls could have been used to measure out grain in payment, as the great institutions like the temples used the bulls to measure others would as well, to ensure that they would not be cheated and that they themselves are just in payment. So the bulls would spread to all who employed others or worked in trade. As the bulls grew in use, they trickled down into the masses as some workers might have been paid with the grain still in the bowl. These workers would have continued to use the cheap bowl instead of trading for a more ornate bowl. One was free and with their grain money, while the other would have cost some of their grain money, lessening the total food and goods they could gain. So the crude bowls spread as a means to measure to bring greater trust in their economy. Then, as people got them in their payment, they used them as they were free and the ornate ones were not. One can see that the bulls are not a shift in decorative desires, but a shift in economic system. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. A few sources and other resources may be found in the description below.